بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله في هف توفيق to continue our study of كشف المراد uh, الحمد لله في هف هاد long journey and uh, we are near to إن شاء الله completion of this journey إن شاء الله uh, as Allah says فإذا فرغت فانصب so I appreciate your continued interest and commitment. May Allah bless you, inshallah. As you remember, the third problem, the third mas'ala was fi al adam wa After we talked about the possibility of adam, we are now talking about the fact that it happens and how it's going to happen. Already we had the first part Qala was sam'u dalla alayh Khaj rahmatullah alayh said that the transmitted references including Quran and Sunnah indicate that this world is going to finish Adam is going to happen this uh, we did then قال ويتأول في المكلف بالتفريق كما في قصة إبراهيم عليه السلام خادي رحمة الله عليه said that when it comes to those who are مكلف those who have obligation and responsibility and therefore they are going to be resurrected and they have to stand for judgment and get reward and punishment for them we cannot say that they are going to finish they are going to expire completely no in mukallafin like human beings also jinns are also mukallaf we have to interpret this as tafriq when we say for example human beings are going to experience uh, destruction we mean that they are going to be scattered their parts are going to be scattered yuta'avvalu ta'avil here means you know a kind of interpretation in order to solve an issue يُتَعَوَّلُ فِي الْمُكَلَّفِ بِالْتَفْرِيقِ So we have to say that Adam in Mukallaf means Tafriq means to separate, to scatter their parts. كَمَا فِي قِصَّةِ Ibrahim As we have it in the story of Prophet Ibrahim and birds. Okay, this is what Khaj Rahmatullah Alai in his brief statement said. Now let's see what Allah Mahalli Rahmatullah Alai says. أقول المحققون على امتناع عادة المعدوم محققون من العلماء Those scholars who are very deep in their understanding and work hard to reach the truth uh, They believe that it's impossible to bring back what has stopped to exist in philosophy we had this if something exists then it doesn't exist there is no way to bring it back because the second would not be the same as the first you can create something similar to that but you cannot bring it exactly same. so if human beings are going to stop to exist and then Allah creates again 
individuals like them, it would not be the same person, it would be a different person. So resurrection, therefore in Bedaya, Nehaya, all we have this you know, discussion. Resurrection is not a matter of i'adatul ma'dum. Resurrection is a matter of our body dissolving and dividing into smaller parts, but our soul is going to remain. So all these discussions is only about body, and even body is not going to finish, although we believe that identity of every person relies on his or her soul. And even if uh, all our body is changed, we remain the same as long as our soul is there. But Allah's plan has been that even our body is not going to uh, destroy 100%. He's going to bring back our body after being scattered. So with the same uh, DNA of you, Allah is going to create you, your body. But as I said, the main thing is the soul. Identity depends on the soul. So this is what I wanted to say at the beginning that the, if you remember the idea of the soul and identity. Uh, everything is easy, but uh, let's see what uh, some theologians have said. Because uh, some uh, Mu'tazilites, for example, have very much complicated the issue of you know uh, ma'ad, and they thought that it is fana, and then Allah creates fana in order to destroy things. They have complicated things because at that time uh, they were not very you know much uh, familiar with philosophy and not very much benefiting from teachings of also Ahlul Bayt, they were using their own mind to come up with some solutions. Aqul, Allah Mahalli Rahmatullah Alayhi says, Al Muhaqqoon Alam Tena'i Aradat Al Ma'doom. Muhaqqoon Min Al Ulama. They are of the opinion that it's impossible to re bring back what has been stopping to exist. But also we will have proof that ma'ad must happen. Not only ma'ad is possible and we believe that it's going to happen, but we say that it must happen justice of Allah, wisdom of Allah, all adilliyya sam'iyya require that ma'ad is going to happen, definitely. So how can we say a'adatul ma'dum is impossible and ma'ad happens and indeed is necessary? For us the answer is very clear, ma'ad is not a'adatul ma'dum. Ha huna qad bayyana أَنَّهُ تَعَالَى يُعْدِمُ الْعَالَمِ وَذَلِكَ ظَاهِرُ الْمُنَاقَذَةِ On the one hand, ulama muhaqqun said, ma'ad, uh, sorry, i'adatul ma'dum is impossible. Borahan says, ma'ad is wajib. Here he said that adam is not happening. <laughs> so, how can we put all this together and at the same time say, ma'alam is going to be destroyed? Uh, because he said, "Fi wuqu al Adam wa samud al alay." Aadat al Maadum. You say it's not possible. Maad is necessary. You say Alam is going to be Maadum. So if it's going to be to Maadum, how then you can have return of Maadum? Fabayyan al Musannif Muradhu min al Adam. Khaj is aware of all these issues. So he's explaining what he means. It's not that he's surprised by you know this kind of. He's aware and he's uh, you know himself uh, gives the answer. Bayan al Musannif, Muradahu min al The author 
خواج رحمۃ اللہ علیہ خواج نصیر الدین توسی رحمۃ اللہ علیہ ہی ہیز ایکسپلینڈ واٹ ہی مینز بائی اعدام اعدام از ٹو ٹیک ایگزٹینس اوے فرام سم تھنگ اما فی غیر المکلفین و هم من لا يجب اعادته فلا اعتبار به دوز هو دونت هاف تکلیف ریسپانسیبلیتی دی ار نات گوینگ تو بی جاجد کوئسچن ریورد پانیشمنت دو نات اپلای تو دیم سو هیر دیز نو ایشو فلا اعتبار به دیر از نو پرابلم هیر as la yajibu i'adatuhu because there is no need for bringing them back fajaza i'adamhu bil kulli it's possible we are not saying this is certainly happening because maybe even animals are going to have some kind of resurrection as al wuhush hushirat maybe they have also some kind of resurrection not in the sense of having taklif but maybe they have some resurrection but we are saying it's not necessary it's not necessary justice of allah wisdom of allah make ma'ad necessary for the mukallafin fajaza i'dam jaza it's possible i'dam hu bil kulliya those that don't have taklif they may be destroyed altogether completely wala yu'ad and they would not be brought back amal mukallaf الذي يجب اعادته فقد تاول المصنف معنى اعدامه but with respect to mukallaf those who are mukallaf that they must be brought back the author has done ta'wil a kind of you know justification a kind of interpretation that would solve the problem he has done ta'wil in the meaning of i'dam bi tafriq ajza'ihi he said i'dam means scattering their parts wa lam tana'fi zalik there's no problem in that it's not i'adatu al-ma'dum tafriq and then jam'a hashr means uh, also jam'a hashr uh, can mean bringing people together can also mean bring the parts of each individual together for example fa in al mukallaf ba'da tafriq ajza'ihi yasdaq alayha annahu halikun if we have zaid here when the body is dissolved we can say halaka he is destroyed what does it mean he is destroyed it doesn't mean that no traces of him has remained or no traces of his body of course to be more precisely because as i said when we take the discussion to the level of spirit it's very clear but this is about the body because body is also to be resurrected So when we say this person is halik when the body is dissolved and it's scattered means this is not the same person this is not the same thing and you cannot benefit from this as you used to you cannot you know talk to this person you cannot you know meet this person speak to this person listen to this person and nahu ghayru muntafi'in bi this is not something that you can benefit from for example if if i have a computer and someone disassembles my computer all together i can say you know you destroyed my computer in the sense that i'm not able to benefit from this computer this is no longer a computer yes i have parts but this is not computer you take took away my computer from me but you can assemble it again and then give it back to me it's possible there's no intellectual or rational contradiction here oh you call 
or we can say halik is applied to something which is disassembled in a different sense not in the sense of it's not going to be beneficial or we cannot benefit from in the another sense and that is to say uh, it is something that by itself is uh, halik it can be uh, destroyed by itself you know uh, in philosophy we have this discussion that we say mumkinul wujud bizat mumkinul wujud bizat when something is contingent and by itself you know doesn't require existence or not existence even if it exists this existence is by the other is by the cause so in itself in its essence it's without existence therefore they say it's ma'dum means if it is left to itself it cannot exist maybe you say you said it has equal relation to existence or non-existence i said yes it means that neither existence is taken in its definition nor non-existence is taken in its definition but if you leave mumkin to itself it's going to be non-existent you don't need something to make it non-existent <laughs> just the fact that there is no cause is enough for non-existence therefore we say or they say so every mumkin by itself is halakun like for example we have life but because our life comes from uh, outside from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can say even when you are living you are mayyad means bizat you are mayyad this life doesn't belong to you like for example if you give me money I am poor having your money doesn't make me rich Allahi anal faqiru fi ghanaya as Imam Hussain says in Dua Arafah فَكَيْفَ لَا أَكُونُ فَقِيرًا فِي فَقِيرًا even those things that I have I don't have they just stay with me but they are not owned by me in a kind of existential way I am not Malik yes temporarily I can use this Amana Amanat so we can say إِنَّهُ حَالِكٌ بِالنَّظَرِ إِلَىٰ ذَاتِ if we look at its essence it is Halik it's finishing is huwa mumkinun wa kullu mumkinin fa innahu bin nazar ila dhatihi la yajibu lahu al wujud because it is contingent and every contingent when you look at its essence existence is not necessary for it fala yujad so it doesn't exist it means it doesn't exist by itself is love wujud because wujud is only for what for two types of things one illa lil wajib bi dhatihi wajib al wujud bi dhat allah subhanahu wa oh wajib al wujud bi ghayri aw bi ghayri wajib al wujud bi ghayri because ash shay uma lam yajib lam yujat in philosophy we said unless something is necessitated by complete cause would not come to existence so wajib al wujud bizat or wajib al wujud bil ghair of course wajib al wujud bil ghair is mumkin al wujud bizat but it's the complete cause that makes it necessary so in itself in its essence is not doing anything it's nothing in reality is nothing Yes, in the realm of mahiyat, yes, every mahiyat is different. Every mahiyat has its own independence. Yeah, so uh, an elephant and a horse, a donkey, a um, flower, even if they don't exist, they are different concepts, different quiddities, different mahiyat. Yes, but are they real? Do they have any benefit, any impact, any effect? No. 
از لا وجود الا للواجب بذاته او بغیره فهو سو ممکن حالکن به نظر الا ذاته if you look at its essence it's halak even when it exists <laughs> even when it exists it's halak فَإِذَا فُرْغَ أَجْزَاهُ كَانَ هُوَ الْعَدَمِ So when its parts are divided, this is Adam. فَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِعَادَتَهُ جَمَعَ تِلْكَ الْأَجْزَا وَأَلَّفَهَا If Allah wants to bring it back, Allah would collect these parts, put them together, كَمَا كَانَتْ As they used to be before. فَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْمَعَادِ This is ma'ad for them. وَيَدُلُّ عَلَى هَذَا التَّعْوِيلِ What can indicate this kind of ta'wil, this kind of interpretation? قَوْلَهُ تَعَالَى Allah's words, Allah's speech فِي سُؤَالِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ أَنْ كَيْفِيَّةِ الْإِحْيَاءِ لِلْأَجْزَاءِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah's word in the question, the request, or because it was a question and also a request. Rabb arni kayf tuhi al maut. He wanted to understand, but also he wanted to see how Allah revives the dead. And mauta. Could be, you know, bones and you know, flesh which are scattered, you know. So, therefore, he says, "Kafiyat al ihya al al ajza fi al akhirah." How these things which die and then they are dissolved are going to be revived. Why we say fi al akhirah? Why did we say the question was about how Allah brings them back in Akhirah? Because Ma'ad is for the uh, hereafter. Although Allah in this world also um, brings back sometimes. We have cases of return and raja'ah in this world. Like, أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها Or those people that Isa alayhi salam were those people that Allah, uh, sorry, Isa alayhi salam revived them, bi'ezn Allah. Or the idea of raja'ah in general in Akhir al-Zaman. So in this world as it sometimes happens, but the main thing is in the hereafter. لَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى لَا يُحْيَى الْمَوْتَى فِي دَارَ التَّكْلِيفِ Allah would not revive the dead, means all the dead, the general, inclusive, الموتى جمع ويتألف اللام يفيد العموم الجمع المحلى بالألف واللام يفيد means in general general إحياء is not in this world في دار التكليف إنما الإحياء يقع في الآخرة فسأل سأل meaning إبراهيم هو refers to إبراهيم the pronoun فسأل عليه السلام عن كيفية ذلك الإحياء he asked how that ihya is going to happen. وَهُوَ يَشْتَمِلُ عَلَى السُّؤَالِ أَنْ جَمِيعِ الْمُقَدِّمَاتِ الَّتِي يَفْعَلُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He wanted to understand everything. Actually, Allah Metabatabai, as I have said many times, He says that He wanted to see how Allah does this. He, he didn't want just to see how this happens. You know, there are two questions. One is how this happens. Okay, Allah could tell him, okay, sit and watch. And in front of him could revive the birds. But the question was how you, kayfa tuhyi, means tuhyi anta al mut. How you do this. And Allah made Ibrahim himself engaged in this revival. اجعل على جبل من على جبل منهن جزعة على كل جبل منهن جزعة ثم دعهن. This da'wah of Ibrahim was like nafkh of Jesus 
from you know his mouth he was blowing into those statues of birth Isa was bringing the statue close to his mouth and was blowing into them and Allah, blowing of Isa into them was giving life to them. It's Allah using the uh, breathe of Isa in the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam the birds were put very far from each other and uh, Ibrahim was not you know able to uh, you know do nafq to blow into them and maybe his power Allah gave him such a power that just from distance ud'uhun he called them so maybe it was enough that his voice reached them. his da'wah not his nafq when it is nafq your you know the air from your mouth must reach them your breath must reach them but in the case of Ibrahim his voice reached them and it was enough so mad'uhunna ya'teenaka sa'ya I am not saying Ibrahim was, you know, uh, more powerful than Isa alayhi salam. Or, uh, I'm not comparing at all. I'm just saying what happened. So, فَسَعَلَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ أَنْ كَيْفِيَّةِ ذَلِكَ الْإِحْيَاءِ وَهُوَ يَشْتَمِلُ عَلَى السُّؤَالِ أَنْ جَمِيعِ الْمُقَدِّمَاتِ الَّتِي يَفْعَلُهَا اللَّهِ تَعَالَى So this involved, included, asking about everything that Allah does in order to do Ihya. حَتَّى يُحَيِّئَهُمْ وَيُعِدَّهُمْ لَنَفْخِرُوا So that Allah would prepare them and make them ready for blowing into them life فَأَمَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِأَخْذِ أَرْبَعَةٍ مِنَ الطَّيْرِ Allah asked Ibrahim to take four birds وَتَغْتِيعَهَا وَتَفْرِيقَ أَجْزَائِهَا وَمَزْجِ بَعْضِ الْأَجْزَائِ بِبَعْضِ سُمَّ يُفَرِّقُهَا وَيَذَعُهَا عَلَى الْجِبَالِ Allah said take four birds and then uh, uh, make them uh, you know, uh, into parts, mix them, and uh, then you farraqa, then t um, put them separate on each of those mounts, four mounts. Thumma yad'uha, then call them. Falamma da'aha, when Ibrahim alayhi salam called those birds, مَيَّزَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَجْزَاءَ كُلِّ طَيْرٍ عَنِ الْآخَةِ Then, although these four were mixed and put in four places, the parts of each bird came and joined each other and became the complete bird. فَلَمَّا دَعَاهَا مَيَّزَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَجْزَاءَ كُلَّ طَيْرًا عَنِ الْآخَرِ All the parts of each bird became separate from each other. They were put together. They were mixed. But they were distinguished from each other. And then they were put together. وَفَرَّقَهَا عَنْ أَجْزَاءِ الْأُخَرِ And they were separate from the parts of other. حَتَّى كَمُلَّةِ الْبُنْيَا So the body was complete. أَلَّتِ كَانَتْ عَلَيْهَا the banya, the construction or the structure, the design that they had come, was re uh, renewed. Then Allah gave them life. So became uh, like a dead bird, then given life. But you see, in this story, the bodies of the birds were scattered, were mixed with each other, were separated. 
put in four places, but they were not they were not hundred percent destroyed. They existed as parts. Lam yu'dem telikal ajza. Fakaza fil mukallaf. In the case of mukallafin, human beings and jinns also, there is no Adam. It's tafriq. Allah mi rahmatullah alayhi says, Hadha ma fahimnahu fahimnahu min qawli. We had this before and we are going actually to have also in the next part that when Allah is not sure what Khaj meant, he would say that this is what I understood. Maybe uh, he meant also something else. This is what ma fahimnahu min qawli. This is what we understood from his word, from his Khaj's you know, words. Kama fi qissat Ibrahim. So, this is the interpretation that Allah makes. This is a you know, right interpretation in the sense that it's correct, it's true, but whether Khaja meant this true meaning or another idea, he says, we are not sure. فَهَذَا هُوَ كَيْفِيَّةُ الْإِعْدَامِ This is the quality, this is the way Adam takes place, which means also what Adam would require. Then, Khaj Rahmatullah Alay, after explaining this point, the right and the true idea, refers to misconceptions of other schools of Kalam when it comes to explaining Adam. What is Adam and how Adam happens? قَالَ وَإِثْبَاتُ الْفَنَاءِ غَيْرُ مَعْقُولٍ Khaj Rahmatullah Alayhi says to prove, to affirm fana, you know, destruction, nothingness and say, you know, a kind of nothingness is going to be created and then that nothingness would be opposite to what exists and then they will be finished he says, this is غَيْرُ مَعْقُولُ What does it mean fana is created? Fana is not something to create. لأن, so, إثباتُ الْفَنَاءِ غَيْرُ مَعْقُولٍ لَأَنَّهُ Because this fana إِنْ قَامَ بِذَاتِهِ لَمْ يَكُنْ ضِدًّا If this fana is a substance that can be dependent on itself in, in the sense of not a creation, in the sense that, you know, like Johar and Aras. Johar philosophers say, Mahiyatun إِذَا وُجِدَتْ وُجِدَتْ لَا فِي مَوْضُوع Substance, if exists, doesn't need a mawdu, a subject. But Aras, Mahiyatun إِذَا وُجِدَتْ وُجِدَتْ فِي مَوْضُوع For example, you have sugar as a substance, and you have white color as aras. It's a quality, kayfa uh, mahsus. So, whiteness needs sugar. Whiteness cannot exist by itself. Even if you say, you know, I buy, you know, paint white, okay, that has also as a substance. It's not just whiteness. There is a substance that has this color. Or, for example, if something is soft or hard, it, again, there is a substance that has this quality. So, is Fana Johar or Aras? If it is Johar, then okay. How this Johar, which is just created, is going to destroy jo uh, Jawahar and substances which were before? And what does it mean, Johar being opposite to another Johar? Z? If it is Aras, how Aras, which belongs to a subject, can create problem for that subject? That subject refuses that in the first place. So, in qama bizatihi lam yakun ziddan wa kaza in qama bil jawar. So, if it is uh, self-subsistent in the sense of 
not creation. It's ma'lul, but in the sense that it doesn't need mawzu, it's a problem. If it needs mawzu, it's a problem. As I said. Aqul. Allah rahmatullah alayhi says. Sorry, today we have to finish earlier for salat. Aqul. Lama dhakar al musan. Lama dhakar al madhab al haq fi kayfiyat al a'dam. When Khaja explained the true opinion, the true uh, attitude, the true uh, madhab. Madhab here can be opinion, although sometimes it's you know, denomination or school of thought. But here can be the same opinion about this issue. Fi kayfiyat al adam About the quality, the, the way destruction happens. Shara'a fi ibtal madhab al mukhalifin fi dhalik. He started explaining or and falsifying refuting the opinion of uh, the opponents wa'lam anna min jumlat man khalafa fi kayfiyat al-i'dam jama'atun min al-mu'tazila some of those who have dig- disagreed about the way i'dam uh, is going to take place are some of the Mu'tazilites. ذهبوا إلى أن الإعدام ليس هو بالتفريق. They said إعدام is not by uh, scattering. بل الخروج عن الوجود. Going all the way out of وجود means becoming really معدوم non-existent. How? بأن يخلق الله تعالى للجواهر ضدان. By Allah creating for substances an opposite zid, huwal fana, which is fana. They cannot exist together. So Allah creates their opposite so that they go out of their existence. But then Mu'tazilites among themselves also have differed. وَقَدْ اِخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةِ أقبال. They have differed. And uh, they have taken three positions. Uh, I think I stop because we are very close to the time of Salat. Inshallah, we continue this in the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.